ownership. God says he will cover us and guide us. That is the work of a shepherd, as he has proclaimed himself. God is the good shepherd who has never lost a sheep or led them astray. I implore you today to choose Jesus and belong to him. Remember, it is only when you belong to Jesus that you can command his unrestricted access to blessings. It is only when Jesus owns you that you can command the attention of God and others. Only in Jesus can you have anything meaningful. Maybe the problem with our lives might not be the immediate causes we see and imagine. If you belong to Jesus, all these limitations go away. So I ask again, who do you belong to? Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit. This is not the time. You fought too long and too hard to give it all up now. You have to pull yourself out of that hopelessness, out of that sense of defeat. Reject hopelessness, reject fear. Shake off that voice that is calling you a failure. Like the psalmist, you have to speak to yourself and say, why so downcast, O oh my soul? Put your hope in God. This is how to start your day. Begin your day with hope, hope in God, hope that does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. When you wake up in the morning, remind yourself, God loves me and because he loves me, there is hope for my life. There is hope for my day. There is hope for my finances. There is hope for my dreams. You see, when you have hope, you can face anything. You can overcome anything. You can get over anything. Dare to look at adversity in the face and say, today will be better than yesterday. I will make it through this day. I will succeed today because I have God in my life. There is hope. I know things can be very tough. Life can get unbearably difficult. That sickness may seem to be winning. The auctioneers might be knocking at your door. You may have lost your job just yesterday. It might feel like the walls are closing in on you. But appreciate that life has seasons, seasons of joy, seasons of sorrow, seasons of toil, seasons of rest. But seasons don't last forever. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So fill your mind with thoughts of faith, thoughts of overcoming, with words of praise to God. What sense is there in wallowing in the problem? What benefit is there in complaining or feeling sorry for yourself? Complaining has never solved anything. Hopelessness only makes things worse. When you lose hope, you lose strength. When you lose hope, you stop dreaming. When you lose hope, your heart feels sick. And when you feel sick, you can't think properly. You can't do what you need to do to make it through the tough season. But when you put your faith in God, everything changes. When your hope is in Christ and the power of his resurrection, you have everything you need to come out victorious. When you think of the power of his resurrection, how Jesus rose from the dead against all powers and principalities, then you know, you know you can overcome anything in this life because that same power is at work in your life. The impossible becomes possible. Your limitations no longer matter because your hope is in what God can do and not what you can do. Your hope is not in your strength or your wisdom. Your hope is not in what your parents can do or what your friend promised or what your sister or brother has for you. Your hope is in the Almighty God, and that hope in God gives you strength to believe, to know that it will all work out somehow. It will all work out for your good. You see, God is able to open doors that you can't open for yourself. God will give you divine connections with people that you never imagined you could meet. God can do it for you, he makes a way where there seems to be no way because he is God.
God can provide for you from the most unexpected places as he did for Elijah in the wilderness. And it's interesting that God used ravens, one of the most greedy birds, to feed Elijah. It doesn't matter how dark your situation is. It doesn't matter what others are saying about your situation. It doesn't matter if everything looks impossible. Despite it all, hold on to that hope. Hope in God never disappoints. And granted, things won't always work out as we've imagined. Things may work out differently because sometimes His will is not our will. Sometimes we pray for something, thinking it's for our good. But God who sees the end from the beginning knows whether the answer to that prayer is good for you or not. His timing may not be what we expect either. You may want that answer now, but friends, it may not come now, and that shouldn't make you give up. God tells us to pray without ceasing, so don't give up. Keep asking. Keep seeking Him. I know it's hard to wait. Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. It's interesting that the verse says, hope deferred and not hope denied. Keep hoping. Don't give up just because your prayer hasn't yet been answered and the longing fulfilled. That prayer answered will be a tree of life. Many times we see God's servants waiting for God's promise to come to be. Abraham waited for years before his promised child was born. Hannah kept praying until God blessed her with Samuel. Jesus Christ himself took time before he revealed himself as the Messiah, and he knew from an early age that he was the Son of God. That's why he asked his parents in the synagogue, as described in Luke 2, 49, Why were you searching for me? he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? He knew who he was, but he didn't reveal it then. Why? Because it's important to allow God's timing in your life. Sometimes we just have to wait for the appointed time. Just because it's taking longer does not mean you're a failure. It could just be that God's timing for you is different. And once you can accept that, you will be at peace with it. The Word of God tells us that God makes all things beautiful in His time. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And we need to accept this. We need to accept that we can't always make sense of what God is doing. Because He can see the bigger picture. He's connecting the dots of your life, and only He knows how it will all make sense in the end. Romans 5, 2 through 5, tells us, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Waiting is also about building our character. Your heart has to be ready for what God wants to do in your life. He will not give you more than you can bear. You may be praying for a promotion, but can your character handle that promotion? And when your character is in the right place, then even the things you hope for will be according to God's ways. And that hope will not put you to shame. And I don't know about you, but I also find it comforting to know that God will not withhold anything good from me. He wants us to have a good life and enjoy good things, and He will not withhold these things from us, but He will fulfill His word at the appointed time. Be hopeful because you know His love for you is beyond what you can imagine. His love is unconditional and is eternal. His heart for you is the heart of a father, a heart of compassion. God's mercy for you is new every single morning. Without fail, God has mercy on you every day. How can we give up on this God? How can you stop believing that He will make things work out for your good? Well, you might say, nobody understands what I'm going through. You may feel that nobody understands what you're feeling. And yes, you may be right. Most of us may not understand what you're going through. We can't feel what you're feeling, but God does. He made you. He knows exactly how you feel. He knows exactly what you're going through and he knows exactly what you need to make it through this difficult season. He knows what you need to come out a conqueror. Yes, he knows that you feel weak and defeated. He knows, friend, he knows. And that's why he has given us solutions in his word. 
he has given us an antidote to the venom the enemy spews. God tells us the secret is to call things that are not as if they are. You know what that means? It means when you feel you've lost the battle, you call yourself a winner. When you are as poor as a church mouse, you call yourself rich. When you're sick as anyone can be, you call yourself healed. It doesn't matter how crazy it may seem, but just do it. Call things that are not as though they are. Why? Because that's how God works. God works through our faith, through our words, and all this is not going to happen if you don't have any hope. So never give up because it's only through hope that things will turn around for you. And you have to have hope and belief in his word to overcome your problems. The power is in his word. God has exalted his word above his name. When you put your hope in his word, then you start to see his promises coming alive in your life. When you put your hope in your own strength or your own wisdom or your own education, you will run out of hope. But when you keep your hope in him, suddenly the incredibly difficult situation seems small. The impossible circumstance becomes possible. Hang on to hope with every bone in your body. Let hope lead the way. If you lose hope, you've lost everything. Without hope, you can't have faith. And without faith, how will you receive what you're praying for? And the devil knows this. The devil knows that if he takes away your hope, then he's defeated you. When you lose hope, you have nothing to look forward to. You think it's all over, but it's not. God has a track record, and he will keep his promise to you if you just hold on to him and to his word. God has given us promises that we can count on. When you're feeling low, discouraged, defeated, when you can't even remember a single scripture to build you up, then just look around you. God's encouragement and affirmation is all around you. Look at the birds in the air. Look at the sun, the moon, the flowers, the trees. Nature itself will remind you how powerful and how beautiful our God is. Nature will remind you that God is all around us, that he's in control, that he is able to handle our situation because he holds the world in his hands. Is there anything too hard for our God? No, certainly not. Nothing is too hard for him. He can handle it all, even your situation. He can handle it. That wayward child, he can handle it. So you lost your job. He can handle it. My prayer for you is found in Romans 15, 3. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit. Put your hope in God. In Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I hope you find it well. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.